Mary the little snail and Dolly the ladybird play with their forest friends in their happy little world. Dolly the ladybird and Mary the little snail always fun games to play, always a brand new tale. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The Mushroom's Cat. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar, Flutter, Stanley and Bubble all set off for a long walk in the woods. They were strolling happily along when they heard someone crying. It's coming from behind that bush, Berry whispered to the others. They saw a little mushroom crying and he looked odd because he didn't have a cap. Who took your cap? Dolly asked in her kindest voice. I don't know. It was missing when I woke up this morning. Don't worry, we'll help you. We'll find you another cap, Berry reassured the miserable mushroom. The friends all ran back to their houses and returned carrying all kinds of different caps and hats. We've brought some new hats to try, they said, and tried them all on the mushroom's head in turn. Dolly put her dotted hat on him first, but it didn't seem to suit the mushroom at all. Then Flutter put her witch's hat on his head. But I don't want to be a nasty witch, the mushroom grumbled. Then Bubble produced a yellow baseball cap, but it was too small. Berry was next to try. I've brought two hats. This is my gardening hat and this is my devil's hat. The gardening hat looked funny on the mushroom's head, but he wasn't happy. I don't like this one, he said in a sullen voice. The devil's hat made him even angrier. I'm not a little devil, you know, he shouted with a red face. But he got most upset when Balthazar showed him the red saucepan. But this is a saucepan. I can't go around with a silly saucepan. It's not a normal saucepan, Balthazar replied sharply. It's our snowman's hat. The last one to try was Stanley the stag beetle who had brought a top hat for the mushroom. Oh, I quite like the look of this one, the mushroom enthused. But can't you find my old cap? That's the one I want to wear the most. So the forest friends started to search for the mushroom's spotty cap. Three canary chicks suddenly flew by. We know where the mushroom's cap is. We saw three woodworms using it for a rowing boat. Everyone down to the stream, Dolly shouted. And sure enough, three woodworms were singing and rowing along in the mushroom's cap. Give the mushroom his cap back, Berry shouted. But we promised to go visit our friends, the fleas. We need a boat to get to their house. But that's a cap, not a boat. And it belongs to the mushroom. Give it back to him, Berry argued. The woodworms eventually gave in and gave the cap back. But how will we go and see the fleas now? They asked sadly. We can take you, we're flying to the little island, the three canary chicks twittered. Hooray! We're going to fly! The woodworm shouted and jumped for joy. But we have to take the mushroom his cap back first. <laughs> you mean the boat? <laughs> the naughty woodworms chuckled, but Dolly gave them one of her serious looks and they stopped laughing. The mushroom said with a big smile as he put it on his head. It fits just perfectly. The woodworms hopped onto the canary's backs. Have a safe trip, the mushroom shouted. Enjoy the flight, the others added. The forest friends all said a final goodbye to the mushroom and walked home with their hats on their heads. Mary and Dolly say, what will we learn today? 
friends. It was a super sunny day, and Dolly the ladybird sat staring out of the window. I'm going to eat breakfast, she thought, and then I'll go for a walk in the meadow. She decided to take her wheelbarrow with her. I wonder if I'll find something interesting to take home in my wheelbarrow, she thought to herself. Goodness me, said Dolly. What a lovely red cherry. That's just perfect for my lunch. She tried to lift the cherry into her wheelbarrow, but it was far too heavy. Too heavy for one little ladybird. Just then, Berry the snail appeared. Why the sad face, ladybird? asked Berry. I can't lift this cherry into my wheelbarrow, Dolly replied. Don't cry, I'll help you, Berry said with a smile. And the two of them picked the cherry up with no trouble at all. Dolly set straight off home with the juicy cherry. Now it was Berry who looked sad. Don't you want to share the cherry with me? The snail said and stamped his little foot. I did help you. But I found it first, Dolly snapped. You're not having any, it's mine. Berry was very upset. The two of them started to fight over the cherry. It's mine, it's mine, shouted Dolly. That's not fair, Berry shouted back. They pushed and pulled the cherry until it split in two. Berry and Dolly plopped to the ground. They were very surprised when a green grub crawled out of the cherry. What have you done to my cherry? He grumbled. That cherry was my home. Oh, don't look so upset, the grub said. I know where we can find plenty more. You can eat cherries while I find a new home for myself. Dolly helped the grub into her wheelbarrow and they all set off to look for the cherry tree. When they arrived, they found the ground around the cherry tree was covered in ripe red fruit. Berry and Dolly jumped for joy. The grub fell fast asleep while Berry and Dolly munched away on fresh cherries and the time soon flew by. It was getting late, so they decided to go home, but this time with two cherries. One for Dolly and one for Berry. The sun was setting by the time they reached Berry's house. They took his cherry out of the wheelbarrow and said goodbye. Berry went inside and waved to Dolly from the window. Berry soon fell fast asleep after such an exciting day. The little snail dreamt about playing in cherries with Dolly and eating until their tummies were full. Then Dolly got back home and went straight to bed. From that day on, Berry and Dolly were the best of friends. Witches. It was a warm summer day and Berry, Dolly and their friends were talking about witches. Do you really think witches exist? Balthazar the bee asked. And they fly around on broomsticks at night? Mm, I'm not sure, Berry mumbled. 
Then Berry and Dolly decided to walk home. Why don't we come back here later? We might see some witches, the ladybird suggested. They packed themselves a tasty picnic and went back to the meadow. They stared at the sky for a long time, but nothing happened. Come on, Dolly, let's go home. I don't think witches are real. Dolly stopped and stared. Berry, I just heard a strange noise from behind that tree. Oh, Berry, the leaves are moving. The two friends hugged each other in fright. A witch suddenly flew out and Berry and Dolly screamed. Then another witch appeared in the sky. Run, Berry! Run and hide! And they ran as fast as they could. The two of them hid behind a bush. Oh, Dolly, it's too bad our friends aren't here with us. Just then, the two witches landed, took off their capes and hats and turned to smile. But your friends are here. It was us, Flatter and Balthazar. This made Dolly very mad. Really? You were the witches? It was very mean of you to scare us like that. It was only meant to be a joke, Balthazar explained. Berry was angry too. It was a very bad joke. You'll be sorry you did this. And the two friends stomped off home. We should play a joke on them now, Berry. Do you think we should scare them too? That's it, Dolly exclaimed. I've got an idea. Flutter and Balthazar were left standing in the meadow. What should we do now? They felt a bit ashamed. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea after all. Berry and Dolly ran to the ladybird's house and dressed up as little devils. They put black clothes on with black hats and added red horns to make themselves look like real devils. Hurry, Dolly! Berry was impatient. I can see them coming. They quickly jumped behind a bush and waited for Flutter and Balthazar to get close. Then they jumped out and scared the living daylights out of their friends. Help! Devils! The butterfly and the bee screamed. Now do you see how bad it is when someone scares you? The little snail said. What? Is that you, Berry? That was a really nasty thing to do. Nasty thing? Your witches were much scarier, Berry shouted. That's not true. The devils were scarier. That's enough, Dolly told them off. Stop this silly arguing. Let's be friends. We promise never to do it again. But you have to promise not to scare us either. You're right, the others nodded. Do you want to try the devil's hats on? Dolly asked. Yes, please. You can try our witch's hats on if you like and sit on our broomsticks. Whippee! This is super! Berry whooped. We're flying just like witches. Yes, Balthazar agreed. Like real witches. Berry and Dolly say, what will we learn today? The water snail. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar were sitting around in the meadow. I wish I had a cousin too, a distant snail relative. Berry sighed. But you've got a sort of cousin, Berry. The water snail is a kind of snail, Flutter the butterfly said. Really? Berry jumped to his feet with a grin. Where does this water snail live? Nowhere. I don't think there's such a thing as a water snail. Oh, yes, there is. I know where he lives. He's got a little house deep down in the round pond on the other side of the forest. 
You're talking nonsense, the bee said. Why don't we go down to the round pond to see for ourselves? Come with me. I'll take you, Hedgehog Harry told his friends. We can be there before it gets dark. Hooray, Berry whooped. I'll bring the air tank so we can swim down to the bottom of the pond. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar hopped into the hedgehog cart and set out for the round pond. It was late in the evening by the time they finally caught sight of the pond. The cart's running away, the little bee shouted, but it was already too late. The hedgehog cart rolled right into the water. It's too late to do anything today. Let's go to bed, and tomorrow you can all swim down to the bottom of the pond. I'm sure you'll find the cart, Harry comforted them. Berry woke up bright and early the next morning. Look, the water lily has opened its petals and there's someone standing on its leaf and he's waving at us. Who are you? Hello, everybody. My name's Sam Snail and I live deep down at the bottom of the round pond. See, Balthazar, water snails do exist after all. I've got my own proper cousin now. Sam Snail didn't understand why Berry was so happy to see him. But then Dolly told him why they had come. I'm so happy to meet you, Cousin Berry, the water snail said. Would you help us find our cart that rolled into the water, Sam? Flutter asked. I'd be delighted. Follow me, the water snail said. So the four friends slipped into their swimming costumes and swam all the way down to the bottom of the pond. This is where I live, Sam Snail announced with pride. <laughs> they heard a frightening hissing sound that scared Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar who hid behind the house. Don't be scared, it's my friend the water snake. Water snake, have you seen a cart at the bottom of the pond by any chance? Hang on to me and I'll take you there. There it is. The water snake hissed. Berry, Dolly, Balthazar and Flutter were happy they'd found it. You did it, said Harry. He was so happy to see his little friends again. Let's go for a trip on the pond, Sam Snail suggested. They all sat on the lily pad and Sam Snail started rowing. It's time we were going, Dolly said when it began to get dark. Oh, let's stay a little longer, Berry pleaded. We'll come again another day. Flutter reassured the little snail. Harry Hedgehog was already waiting for them. Berry, Dolly, Flutter and Balthazar all said goodbye to Sam Snail and headed for home. The next day, Berry and Dolly both painted colourful pictures of their distant cousins. <laughs>